This is Twit. Comet Three I Atlas just keeps giving. Yeah, giving I kind of headlines and new imaginary passes on it. And by golly, we now have some new images that don't look like a spaceship. How about that? I kind of uh, uh, let the cat out of the bag in my what I'm thankful for. But this was this was why it was really kind of front of mind for me. Uh, but. At long last, NASA has finally had their big press conference this week uh, about Comet 3i uh, Atlas. I keep wanting to say 3IA Atlas, but it's just 3i Atlas. And, and it's the third interstellar comet that we've seen come through the, uh, the solar system. And uh, for the last month or so, uh, we haven't been able to get any information from NASA about what they found uh, in October when it made its uh, pass by Mars and, uh, and close approach to the sun. So we got all of that. NASA says... Pretty definitively, it does not look like a spacecraft. It looks like a comet. It acts like a comet. Let's just accept that it's a comet and see what we can learn about this alien dust from a star system beyond our own. Uh, but we got amazing new images from uh, not just uh, a spacecraft at Mars, but uh, the Psyche spacecraft, uh, some solar spacecraft, Parker Solar Pro, I think was one of them. So they have all of these pictures from across the solar system and uh, and from different angles too that really give them different views of what this comet is like. And it just might be one of the most observed simultaneous comets uh, from space of all time because of this, it's the way that it's it's been coming in. And hopefully this NASA press conference, which was a couple of days ago as we're recording this, will put to bed a lot of like the conspiracy theorists who say that NASA has been trying to hide this information because there was some sort of alien discovery in it. Cover up! They, they didn't announce it because all of it happened during a shutdown. And so they couldn't mm. say anything about it. Uh, and that was, that was like the big story in October. It was that they were being accused of hiding something, what they found. Now they laid it all out there. You can download the images, see everything uh, up close. Not a, not a spaceship, definitely a comet. Still very, very cool. And mark your calendars, December 19th, it will be its closest to the Earth, which is going to be our best time uh, to see it. But it is on the other side of the solar system, so it's pretty far away. So I, I take it Dr. Loeb hasn't come out with any fresh pushback since the press conference? Before the press conference, he issued a new statement, like on Medium, saying that it could be a spaceship, but it could also just be a very interesting comet. So... <laughs> oh, that guy. Okay. Uh, hey, SpaceX has a new Starship design called Version 3 that we've been anticipating, but That's right. apparently it's not quite ready for flight. No, no. Did you see this, by the way, today? Or no? I did. I, I saw the headline, but I didn't see any video. Yeah, so they were testing the new booster, Booster 18. So it's the first Version 3. It's supposed to be a more powerful, more capable version of the Starship. And I think we've got like a, like a Twitter... Uh, uh, embed of this from St uh, Starship Gazer in the story itself, John. Line uh, 22. But, yeah, on line 22 there. Uh, because uh, something happened during the tests and there was like a, 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 a depressurization event or something, but there is very clear damage to this vehicle. If you've got to scroll all the way down and, and, and expand the, the embed in there, John, a little bit more, a little bit more, I think right there, if you, if you do the see more, you can see that there's this huge kind of buckling in the oh. bottom half of the booster. And there is video, uh, I think, from Lab Padre on X that you can actually see the, the real-time event of when this happened. It looked like a little bit of a mini explosion, but it, it clearly wasn't that because it's not blown apart. It looks like it just kind of like crumpled, which, you know, could be a failure of their pressurization. You know, when it's not fueled, you need to have the tanks pressurized because they're so, uh, so huge. Uh, something might have happened on on that, or maybe just the the size of it. It just couldn't stand up while it was being moved around. Not a good sign, though, well, uh, Rod, for uh, for this first version of what's supposed to be the one that goes to the moon, the version three. So, uh, mm. and they have to they have to get this, you know, uh, uh, under control in order to make their next uh, their next launches. And this comes at a time where SpaceX already there was a memo that that was reported on this week uh, is is saying outright they're not going to be ready for a 2027 flight to the moon. 2028 is probably going to be it uh, at the earliest right now. So, you know, that, 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 <sighs> that goal line keeps getting farther away, 
uh, as 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 these happen. Uh, meanwhile, like like we were talking about, Blue uh, Blue uh, Origin announced uh, plans to scale up their new Glenn rocket uh, to have uh, even more engines on both first and upper stages uh, to make it more capable uh, as well as uh, reusable. And as been as has been discussed by us on the show before, maybe we ought to get somebody to talk about this. There are alternative de- mission designs that could utilize New Glenn and Falcon Heavy and get all this done in terms of a, a human lunar landing if they yep. would just shift gears and go for it instead of forcing SLS and what's becoming a more and more doubtful starship on us. Although we'll probably get some mail for that. But but really, guys, you know, <laughs> years and years and years behind. Elon could afford to do this faster, so get with the program. All right. I'm just going to read this as you wrote it, Tarek. This is your headline. Are you ready? (laughs) Uranus is so bright. Oh, (laughs) pull him up. The planet Uranus. 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 (laughs) Sorry, I was off there. Uh, Uranus is a... I will never... I will never, I don't apologize. I will never apologize for a Uranus joke, ever. Hey, if there's anything I put in the little smiley face with the sunglasses (laughs) in there for your Tark. Today is a very special day. Uranus is at opposition, which means that it's the, Uranus is the brightest in the sky uh, that it's ever been uh, for the year and that it's going to be because it's directly opposite the sun as uh, on the side of the sun from us. So this is a really great time to go and try and find it usually with a telescope because it's kind of hard to see, but it's off in the Eastern sky uh, just after sunset tonight. um, And you're going to want to look for the, uh, the stars in the constellation Taurus low on the, the Eastern horizon uh, around with like the Pleiades. And they're, they're going to be a, a bit of a, a, a signpost to help you get to, uh, to the, I was going to say the gassy planet, but I'm not gonna, although I think I just already have right to Uranus itself uh, in, 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 in the, in the sky. And it, it's just a fun uh, bit. It's going to appear a, a bit between ab- above uh, the Taurus constellation and below the Pleiades star cluster. And I hope you all get a chance to see it because it's, it's not a planet that we get to see all the time. This is the best time to see it. And uh, yeah, I am thankful for that Uranus joke too, uh, Rod. Um, I, 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 I laud you. I'm just trying to look up when the next opposition is after this. Do you happen to know? Well, there's an opposition every year because it's, it's relative to its opposite us in the uh, sky right so it's always there's always going to be an opposite of, of uh, side of the sun I see uh, uh, for us yeah. inside so but this is when it's brightest each time so it's All not right. like it's the closest uh, of its orbit because its orbit takes forever so yeah because its orbit is like 250 years or something isn't yeah. it yeah yeah but but every planet has an opposition to earth every year when it's directly opposite us in the in, in relation to the sun If you like what you just saw, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can catch us on your favorite podcast app or subscribe to our YouTube channel using the links below. Thanks.